frustrating and it's actually pretty angering that, that people could be so ignorant and, and just be so lifted up in pride that they'll fall into this nonsense because it is nonsensical. It's the same type of the people that fall into this flat earth nonsense. And see, people like this that, that believe these just ridiculous things about the Bible actually bring a bad name on Christianity and the Bible. They're turning it into a big joke. What, because what they believe is a joke, but what they believe isn't in the Bible. And these people that want to say, oh, the earth is flat, you're making a mockery and a joke out of God's creation. And they build up these straw men and say, see, look, NASA lied about this picture is digitally created. So that just means the earth's flat. No. Or they'll, they'll give you this false dichotomy of, of, oh, well, you don't believe the earth's flat? Oh, so you believe in evolution? No. No, we don't. We believe the Bible. But all of your stupid proofs and verses that you think prove your flat earth do nothing of the sort. But the simple ones will be persuaded by that. When they have these videos, there's 420 verses that say that the Bible, that the, that the earth's flat. And the simple ones will be like, oh, wow, that, I mean, if there's that much evidence for it, then it must be flat. Or, wow, then the Bible must be really stupid, one or the other. Here's some of the references. I don't want to go too far into this, but... Before, before we get into the references, the reason why I'm bringing up this thing about the flat earth is because we're actually in a passage that, for me, see, I question not the flat earth. A long time ago, I questioned what's known as geocentricity. If you're not familiar with that, that just means that the earth is at the center of things instead of the sun. So we have a heliocentric model as given to us by science and by a lot of people, right? Believe that the, the, the sun is kind of at the center of our solar system. The planets revolve around the sun, right? I mean, you all know that model. That's called the heliocentric because the helio means sun, okay? Geocentric model means that the earth is, is at the center and that the planets and the sun and the moon and everything revolve around the earth. Now that... I don't believe that. I don't subscribe to that. But that makes more sense to me than the flat earth does. And I think the geocentricity is just kind of the gateway drug to flat earth. Because they take the, the arguments of geocentricity and just put it on steroids. But what they do, and the reason why geocentricity has any type of validation at all, at least you have people who are like physicists or scientists that will try to give you alternate models of how things could work. Like mathematically, with what we see and observe in the sky, with the sun, with the moon, with the stars, with the way everything rotates and shifts, you, you could actually come up with a model. And then someone, people have built models of, well, if the earth is stationary. Because what, there are, what their argument is, is saying that, well, think about if you're standing on a train and you're standing there and you see it looks like the ground's moving. Right? You stand on the back of a train and the train's moving and it looks like the ground is moving under your feet. Right? It's what it looks like because you're in a closed environment. How do you really tell which is moving? Is it the ground moving or is it what you're on moving? Right? So, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but that's what they say is that, well, we can't really tell if the earth is moving or if the sun is moving. Right? If the earth is stationary or the sun is stationary because we're on the earth, so, so it's, it's, you can't do anything to determine one or the other, is what they would say. And um, then they come up with these other models and stuff, and they say, okay, well, whatever. Oh, at the end of the day, it, it kind of ends up just being a foolish question overall, but they, but they, you know, they get into it that way. And, and I, I remember looking into that and trying to figure it out. And what they'll do is they'll use verses like this, like in Joshua, where it says, sun stands still. So what they do is say, well, he's, he's ascribing the motion to the sun. And say, well, we'll take the Bible literally, right? Yeah, we take the Bible literally. So if he says sun stands still, then the sun must have been moving. So in order for the sun to not move, and we see that the earth, you know, there's other Bible verses that says, well, the earth doesn't move and this stuff, so the earth is, it must be stationary. Then, well, how could it, if the Bible says that the earth doesn't move, then how can we say it's traveling around the sun? It's moving then, right? Or how can we say it's spinning? So these are the arguments for the geocentric model. And, and a lot of those same arguments will come to flat earth. But see, the problem is, at least with the flat earth, that doesn't prove that it's flat, first and foremost. But second of all, this is all written 
in our perspective to give us understanding of what things mean. And very, very simply, when we look at this passage, let's look at, at what the verse actually says. Look in verse number 12, Joshua 10. Then spake Joshua to the Lord, because what they like to do is say, oh, well, we believe the Bible is literal, and you must not be believing it's literal if you think that the earth moves around the sun. But let's take that same argument and just apply it consistently. If, you say, well, if you're, if you're going to have to say that that's not literal then, because we, you know, it, to think that the earth could possibly move around the sun, well, let's, let's look at the verse. Then spake Joshua the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Was the, does the sun have legs? Is the sun standing on Gibeon, on the city? Well, it says there, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Do you see how you could get really nonsensical when you read Scripture? You go, well, we believe it literally, don't you? Oh, well, then you're just going to make the Bible say whatever you want and say, no, no, we use common sense because we speak language and we understand how language works. And when you're getting a point across, with the word, it's not, it's not saying it's not literal, but it's using phrases and terms to, to get the understanding. No one has a problem understanding what it means. When he says, sun, stand now still, and it's standing upon Gibeon because it's shining its light upon Gibeon. And, and nothing's moving. It's stationary. Because when we look at the sun, we see a sunrise and a sunset. And that's what it looks like to us. It's inconsequential whether it's because the earth is rotating or the sun is moving. It doesn't matter. We see a sunrise and a sunset. And that's the way we understand it. And if you're going to communicate to anybody, anyone, anything, you're going to use those types of, of terms. Nobody walks around saying, oh, our earth rotation is nearing the <laughs> point where the sun is no longer visible. Say, it's a sunset. Because that's what everyone uses and, and understands it to be. And he says, And thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Was the moon in the valley of Ajalon? Was the moon just sitting in the valley? No. It's just above where it was located, right? So we don't get too caught up in this, this hyper-literal type of just nipping. And this is what I was trying to get to, I think, a week or two ago on just, just zooming in and kind of getting too, too focused, too deep on some of these words where you just, you're not seeing the forest for the trees because you're so focused in on a tree, you don't actually see the big picture. You don't see what it's talking about. Watch out for that. 